Dodge City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers. That's with a U.S. Marshal and the spell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Sure is hot today, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Used to get hotter in Sweetwater, though. Uh, Texas. Yes, sir. Uh, but I wasn't there very long. No. <laughs> what'd you do there, Chester? Oh, I was a salesman, Mr. Dillon. Salesman? <laughs> well, what'd you sell? Lightning rods. Lightning? Oh. Well, now, they're good things to have, Mr. Dillon. Why, I had a line of well, lightning rods. Well, now, don't rods explain you... it to me, Chester. <laughs> Too hot. Well, I'll go get us some beer. Maybe that'll help. I don't think I want any beer, Chester. Well, then, why don't you just go take a C.S. to Mr. Dillon? I'll stay here in the office. <laughs> why don't you just leave me alone, huh? All right, Mr. Dillon. Hey, the marshal. Yeah, what do you want, Doc? A couple of cowboys been feeding their liquor over at the Texas Trail. That's what saloons are for, isn't it? Yeah, they were giving Kitty a bad time. Oh? She got rid of them now. But they're down at the end of Front Street now, making remarks and pestering the town ladies. It just might lead to trouble. Well, I'm not going to walk down there in this heat just to lecture a couple of hard-nosed cowboys. I'll go, Mr. Dillon. Oh, good, Chester. You go, huh? Just tell them to take it easy and leave the ladies alone. Yes, sir, I will, Mr. <laughs> Dillon. enough. Who's this? The preacher, maybe. <laughs> Boys, Marshal Dillon sent me down here. And we're going to send you right back, fella. Mr. Dillon said you can have all the fun you like, but to leave the ladies alone. That's all dang trouble, these Dodge ladies. They've been left alone too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what they need is a couple of big-handed Texas men. <laughs> yep. Look, now, now, why don't you go over there to the Alphaganza? I I'll buy you both a beer. You will, huh? Well, that's mighty thoughty of you, mister. We just don't want any trouble, that's all. Sure we don't. And I got an idea how we won't have any. Wait till I get on my horse here. Stay with our friend a minute, Trevor. Hey, mister, uh, I'll make a bet. What kind of bet? What do you mean? Any kind. You name it. Come on. Well, but I don't... I got him! He spilled his gun, Trevor. Pick it up and grab your horse. Get this rope off of me. Maybe you'll wear off, mister. You'll go in for a ride. Drag him, Tobo, drag him. Let's go! I got Chester, Marshal. What? What? Who got Chester? A couple of cowboys. They roped him and dragged him out of town. Come on. Well, well, which way? West. I'm going with you. Hurry. Uh. Come on, right. There they are, but they're not dragging anything. They must have cut him loose. Oh, there he is, by that sagebrush. Chester. Chester. Get that rope off his feet, Channel. Look at him, he's bleeding all over the... 
tore him to ribbon. I'll yeah. stay with him, Marshal, if you'd like to. No, Shiloh. Go get our horses up. I want to get him back to the dock right away. All right, Marshal. So, Mr. Chester, I got you now. We'll be at the dock soon. Easy, Chester. Easy, fella. Easy now. I'll uh, carry him when you get tired, Marshal. I won't get tired, Shiloh. Not for a long time. Well, Doc? Yeah, he's in bad shape, Marshal. The worst is something's bothering his breathing. I don't know what it is. We'll just have to wait and see if it goes away. If he lives the next few days, he'll pull through. Oh, Doc. I know, I... I know, I know, I know. I'll stay right here with him. Now. Why did I have to send him? Why didn't I go? Oh, and I don't blame myself, I Marshall. told him to go, didn't I? Yes, but... Uh, Doc, can, can I talk to him? No, no, Marshal, no. Not for a while. All right, then. Will you, will you tell him this for me? I'm going after those men. I'm going to bring them back. Alive. Or at least half alive. In the street outside, waves of heat move back and forth, making things seem unreal. Like Chester lying up there at docks. That seemed unreal somehow. I walked down to the jail, and I went inside, and I sat there for a while. And then all at once, I got up and unbuckled my guns, and I hung them on a peg behind the desk. And I went over to the Texas Trail. I'm over here, Matt. Sit down. Matt, I heard about Chester. How is he? Doc doesn't know for sure. Oh. They were in here bothering you. Who were they, Kitty? I never saw them before. One was a kind of weasel-faced man named Trevitt. And the other? Big man. Real brute. Named Stobo, I think. I see. What outfit, they say? Would it be the crow track? Yeah. The crow track's holding a herd up the river. Thank you, Kitty. Wait a minute, Matt. Yeah? No business of mine to ask, but where are your guns? It would have been easier for Chester if they'd have shot him and killed him. But I don't see... So I'm not going to shoot them. If Chester dies, I'll see him hanged. Otherwise... Otherwise what, Matt? I don't know. But I'm going to bring him back and... And we'll wait and see. You're taking an awful chance. Maybe. Oh, Matt. Please be careful. Sure. Uh, Kitty. Yeah, Matt? Look in on Chester once in a while, will you? Maybe oh, of course can... I will. Don't worry about him. Thank you, Kitty. So long. What is it, Shiloh? I'll walk outside with you. M- Marshal, I want to ride after those cowboys with you. No, Shiloh, I'm going alone. But we could use you here at the jail. Here? I'm going to take two prisoners. I don't know when or how, but I need a jailer when they come in. So I'll bring them in with you, and then I'll... No. The... That's something I have to do alone. Marshal, you're a stubborn man, but... Okay, I'll do it. Keys are in my desk. Uh, here's my horse. I'm going now. Hey, uh, wait a minute, Marshal. You're not armed. I know it, Shiloh. Goodbye.
Who's the trail boss here? Where is he? Here I am. And I don't need any rider. Maybe not, but you got two riders I need. How's that? Just what do you want, mister? That's the crow track outfit, isn't it? That's right. I'm looking for a couple of your men called Stobo and Trevin. They ain't here, mister. And where are they? They come back this afternoon, picked up the gatherings and left. Didn't even wait to get paid off. I'm telling you this just because they're no good, and I'm glad they're gone. Which way'd they go? I wouldn't tell you if I knew, mister. I didn't think you would. Who are you, anyway? I'm a U.S. Marshal out of Dodge. That's so? <laughs> well, I don't know what you want them for, and I don't care, but... How you going to take them, Marshal? Put salt on her tail? <laughs> <laughs> you ought to at least take a club if you're going after that Stobo. He's mean, he's big. Besides being a Texan. <laughs> We've hung Texans up here before, mister. Marshal. Yeah. I heard Stobo and Trevitt say they were heading west, following the Arkansas. Where are you from, son? Texas. Near Waco. And what are you sniveling around and forming on these men for? That Stobo kicked me. Knocked me down and kicked me. All right, son. I'll ride along the Arkansas. But you ride back to Texas and learn how to fight your own battles. cut straight down to the Arkansas and followed it west. I rode close to the water where I could use the sound of it for only my cover. After an hour or two, I spotted a hobbled horse alone. Stobo and Trevitt must have separated. I got down and followed the animal's tracks as best I could in the moonlight until I caught the dying coals of a campfire on the bank ahead. To one side, I could make out the huddled figure of a man asleep in his blanket. It took a long time to crawl to his head where I saw the weasel face of the man Trevitt. His gun belt lay on a saddle blanket in easy reach. I stood up and heaved it out into the river. And as Trevitt sat up with a snap, I kicked him back. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! You sit up again and I'll smash your skull, Trevitt. Don't kill me! Don't kill me! Shut up! Now where's your rope? I told you to lie down! Now, where's your rope? Under my saddle there. He gonna lynch me? No. But you may hang legally if you live that long. Now, keep your arms in that blanket and lie still while I get you roped up here. Who are you, mister? Yeah, that'll do it. Let's just say I'm a good friend of a man you dragged out of Dodge this morning. Stobo was in on that, too. It was his idea. He did it. Don't worry. I'll find Stobo. You ain't going to leave me like this. I'll be back. You ain't even carrying a gun. Too bad for you, I'm not. Now, Trevor, I'm going to throw you across my horse and tie you on. He'll take you under Dodge right to the jail. When you get there, tell Shiloh who you are if you can still talk. He'll give you a nice, clean cell. You're the marshal. I'll be back when I find Stobo. You can't do it, marshal. I'll die on that, son. Ride like that across a horse. No, no, listen. Stobo's about a mile upriver. We had a row and I left him. See, I, I told you, marshal. Uh, let me go now. Trevor, how would you like to go to Dodge behind my horse with a rope around you? No, 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 don't, no, no, don't, marshal. Don't kill me. Pack you on now. I tied Trevor across my horse and started him off in the direction of Dodge, and then I forgot about him. Stobo was next. I rode west on Trevor's horse. 
Dawn was just breaking when I saw him. Crouched behind a campfire, cooking breakfast. His horse was saddled and stood nearby. I rode straight up, got down, and walked over. You lost, stranger? No. I'm not lost. Dobo. No tricks, mister. I don't see a gun, but no tricks. Relax, Dobo. I'm unarmed. Who are you? Matt Dillon. I'm a U.S. Marshal. Out of Dodge. You're a long way from Dodge, Marshal. Stobo, you and your pal had some fun with a friend of mine yesterday. You hurt him bad. Maybe you killed him. <laughs> you rode out here without a gun to tell me that? You're the craziest marshal I ever saw. <laughs> I'm going to shoot you, Marshal, and bury you in the river. What do you think of that? I expected you would. Huh? But unless you want it on your conscience that you refuse to feed a man on the trail, you better give me a piece of that pork first. You're about the coolest man I ever saw, Marshal. Do I eat? <laughs> sure you do. Sure. You just stand right there across the fire and don't move. I have to shoot you before you've been fed. I know. It's too bad I... Only got one dish for your last meal, Marshal. A man can keep sassy on meat alone, Stobo. <laughs> yeah, he sure can. Well, looks about done. At least this here piece says you can't... All right, I got your gun, Stobo, so don't try anything. You burn me, you burn me! You Just a few coals that won't hurt you. Now shut up and get on your horse. Oh, I'll kill you for this, Marshal. You can't hurt me like that. On your horse! Come on now. Get up there. Now, you just sit there, Sobo. I'm going to throw a noose around your neck, so keep your hands down. There now. Now, you ride toward Dodge. And you do anything I don't like, and I'll jerk you off your horse and drag you the rest of the way. Now, ride. <laughs> Jail's on the left. You see it? I see it. All right, pull up. Shiloh! Shiloh! Well, hello, Marshal. This other one? Yeah. Try to get here. More dead than alive, but he's here. It was rough, Marshal. Real rough. Yeah. Shiloh, how about Chester? Tell me. Doc ain't sure yet, but he's alive. Lock Stobo up. I'm going over to Doc's. All right, you get down. Walk straight. I'll shoot you through both knees. Chester was asleep, but the Doc let me take a look at him. Seemed to me he had more trouble breathing than before. But the Doc said another day might see him out of it. And there was nothing I could do. So I went up for a steak and some sleep. And the next morning, I went back to the jail. Morning, Marshal. Is everything all right, Shiloh? Doc looked over your prisoners. Trevor's pretty sick yet, but Stobo's all right. Got a few burns is all. Nothing could hurt that moose. A hanging might. Sure, but what if Chester pulls through? You can't hold us in, Marshal. There's no law that says... I don't like the sound of your voice, Trevor. But you can't Be hold... quiet. Don't worry, Trevor. You too, Stobo. Uh, Shut the door, Shiloh. I don't even want to look at him. That Stobo's a mean one, but I feel kind of sorry for Trevor. And go cry about it someplace else. I don't feel sorry. Don't you take it out on me, Marshal. I didn't send Chester off to do my job. I, uh... Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm sorry, Go get some breakfast, huh, Shiloh? I'll, I'll, I'll wait here now. Uh, I'll be back later. Hello, 
right, Sheriff. Doc? What? Well, what is the doc coming? <laughs> Chester. He's going to be all right. But... You sure? Why, well, of course, Marshal. His breathing suddenly changed. The pressure's off somewhere. Oh, he's going to be fine. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> of course, he'll be in some pain for a while yet. But... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, Doc. I'll, I'll come see him in a little while. I'll tell him for you, Marsh. All right, come on, Trevin. Where to? Come on, I said. What's up, Marsh? I'll be back for you, Stobo. I'll get going. Come on. <laughs> Stobo did it. Not me. You, you can't do anything to me. Shut up. Trevitt, your horse is down at the National. Go get on it. You turning me loose? Get your horse and ride, and don't ever come back to Dodge. Not while I'm alive. Now go on before I change my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. sure. Sure, I'll go. I turned him loose. Now, come on, get out of that cell. Am I free, too? You will be in a little while. So the doc, Marshal. Chester's... Hey, uh, where are you going with Stobo? Going to shoot me in the back, probably. That right, Marshal? I'm going to do what I should have done three days ago when I sent Chester after you. Bring him outside, Shiloh. Let's go, Stobo. Slow and easy. Bring him over here, Shiloh. You're gonna drag me, is that it? You try that. That's what you do, isn't it, Stobel? Don't try. Never mind. Shiloh, hold my guns. Here. What the? (laughs) Oh, I get it. You're gonna fight me. Marshal, you're crazy, and I saw it. Why, I'll tear your throat out. If he wins, let him go, Shiloh. Maybe I will. I said you'll let him go. All right, Marshal, all right. Maybe you are crazy, but I guess this is your party. Come on, Marshal. (laughs) I'll make it short for you. Real short. Stand back, everybody. Get back, do you hear? You're big, Stobo. But you're stupid. You're ugly, stupid. Why, you... I'll kill you! I'll kill you! No! No! Give me my guns, Shallow. Here. You don't look too good, Marshal. I'd better get that doc. He's hurt, but he isn't dead. If he can't ride, throw him on a stage. But get him out of here. If I see him again, I'll shoot him. Chester, can, can I come in? Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon. My, what happened to you? I, I've been lecturing a couple of hard-nosed cowboys. One in particular. Oh, I, I see. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Dillon. Those two sort of got the drop on me. Yeah, they sure did. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. I've been thinking, and, and, uh, Yeah? What is it, Chester? Well, Mr. Dillon, I, I, I'm i not much help to you here. Maybe I better just... That's enough, Chester. Well, but I, I've been thinking Well, that... just stop thinking. 
Yes, sir. Now, look, Chester, I'm going to tell you something. I, uh... I... I need you here. You see, you're the only man in Dodge I can really trust. The only one. Yes, sir. Well, you you can trust me, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, I, I, I know. And I'm thanking you, Chester. <laughs> but you, you're sure no help to me lying there, you know. No help at all. Well, I, I don't even stay here long. The doc says I'll be up and around again. Look, uh, Chester, I, I, I tell you what. I, I'll go get patched up and then we'll make Kitty come over and fix us some steaks and we'll... We'll have some beer, too, huh? Well, what do you say? Well, I... That'd be fine, Mr. Dillon. My. I'd sure like that. Some time since we'd had any real trouble. Anything more than throwing a few juiced up cowboys in jail to sober up for a few hours. And I liked it peaceful for a change. And I hoped it had stayed that way. Well, that morning I'd gone to take a few catfish out of the Arkansas. When I got back to the office, I found a note from Chester saying he's at the Alafraganza having a beer. John. Over here, Mr. Dillon. Any luck, sir? No, oh, about a dozen, Chester. We'll have them for supper. No, oh, that'll be fine. Oh, I, I, I've been telling Mr. Carter here about you, Mr. Dillon. Mr. Carter? Robert P. Carter. How do you do, Marshal? Hello, how are you? Buy your drink? Well, thank you. Yes, I, I believe I will. Uh, I think I'll have a beer. Bartender? A beer. Yes, Mr. Sir. Carter came in on the stage from Denver last Saturday. Oh, you live in Denver, Mr. Carter? Oh, heavens no. New York, Marshal. I've only been west a few months, investing money in gold mines and cattle and the like. Mr. Carter's very rich. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, Chester, I will be if Mother Nature holds out. His girl is coming in on the stage today, Mr. Dillon. Oh, is that so? My fiancé, Marshal. He met her in Denver, but she couldn't get ready in time to come here when he did. Ah, I see. I had to come ahead on business. Couldn't wait. We'll take the Santa Fe to St. Louis from here. They're going to be married in St. Louis, Mr. Dillon. Wow. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, but is the stage always this late? He's worried, Mr. Dillon, with his girl on stage and all. <laughs> It'll be along, Mr. Carter. You talking about the stage? Oh, hello, Shiloh. Shiloh says he's been sitting there by himself all morning, Mr. Dillon. Since last night, Chester. You know something about the stage, Shiloh? Only that it's carrying 50000 in gold out of Leadville. So? Well, maybe that's why it's late. What do you mean, man? Well, if somebody wanted that gold, they'd have to stop the stage long enough to get it unloaded, wouldn't they? Bandits. He means bandits. Now, now hold it, Mr. Carter. You're already bleeding and nobody's shot you yet. Uh, what? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Just take it easy. The stage will get here all right. It's off on a little oh, late. But this know. man says it might have been held up. Why, there may have been a shooting. Well, now, now, he's just daydreaming, that's all. Wait, wait a minute. Listen. Huh? Well, there it is now. Oh. <laughs> See, Mr. Carter, there was nothing to worry about. It got here all right. Yes. What is it, Jim? <laughs> Got held up, Marshal. What? Lost 50,000 gold. Where'd this happen? About 20 miles back near Cottonwood Draw, but... Anybody shot? Another shot fired. He tricked you. But James! Marshal... Uh... Where's James? What? Driver! Where's the girl who was on this stage? What's happened to her? That's what I started to tell you, Marshal. There's a tree across the road. We got down to move it. This rider got to drop on us. He's all alone. Never mind all that. Where's the girl? He took the gold... 
took the girl, too. What? He took Jane? You mean to tell me you let him take Jane? Well, now, mister, there wasn't much choice. He held a shotgun on us, and they're gone before we could do a thing. Oh, but this, this is impossible. Now, take it easy, Mr. Carter. We'll find them. You'll find them? You were off fishing when it happened. What kind of law is there around here, anyway? Easy, Mr. Carter. I took one of the team after Marshal, but I couldn't get near him. He had an extra saddle horse with him. Put her on that. I see. But I don't think he planned on kidnapping that girl. The way it was, he just looked at her and told her to come along. Did you recognize him, Jim? No. No, his horses are both sorrels. By but... heaven, Marshal, you'd better get her back here at once, or I'll take this up with Washington. I'll see you disgraced. Shut up, Carter. Chester, go get our horses and a couple of rifles. I'll get a few more details from Jim here. Well, don't you want a posse, Mr. No, there'd be too much shooting around that girl. Now hurry, will you? Yes, sir, I'll hurry, Mr. Dillon. Mark my words. We'd better have Jane back here by nightfall, Marshal. You care to ride along, Mr. Carter? Uh, No. No, I'm I'm not equipped for that sort of thing. I'll take care of matters at this end. Yeah. All right, now, Jim, now tell me first exactly what happened. Well, we just come down into the draw about 100 yards from the creek. The blood-red sun was drooping over the edge of the prairie when Chester and I reached Cottonwood Draw. We rode hard until night fell, and then we had to stop and wait for daylight. But with morning, we drew a heavy rain that washed out every track. We rode on anyway. For the next three days, we scouted a big piece of that country. But it was hopeless. Finally, we headed back to Dodge. Empty-handed. Bartender, bring me a bottle, will you? Sure, Matt. Where is she, Marshal? Is she all right? Carter, I'm... I'm sorry. What? You mean you didn't find them? Rain washed out their trail first morning. We, We never picked it up again. They could be anywhere. You came back without her. We did what we could, Carter. Now we'll just have to wait for word of some kind. You'll be seen sooner or later. Wait. Well, I won't wait. This will cost you your job, Marshal. I promise you that. Look, Carter, if it'd make you feel better, why don't you ride out yourself? It isn't my job to keep the law around here, Marshal. It's yours. Yeah. (laughs) Say, Marshal... <clears throat> yeah, what is it, Shiloh? Big Kate wanted to see you when you got back, asked me to tell you. Big Kate? Oh, all right, thank you. Come in. No luck, eh, Matt? How'd you know, Kate? I can tell by looking at you. It's thousands and thousands of miles, that prairie. It'd been just luck if we'd found them. Nobody's blaming you, Matt. No? Hey, Carter is. And I suppose it's hard on him. His fiance and all that. Carter's no good, Matt. Well, I never liked him, but I suppose that doesn't matter. And I'll tell you why he's no good. You know something, Kate? Mm. Carter's been drunk a lot while you were out. He was bragging to one of the girls last night. Bragging? What, about what? Not much, to my way of thinking. Well, go on. Well, to make it short, seems Jane's father got into a big deal with Carter up in Denver. Yeah. Carter got him tied up good and then threatened to ruin him. Oh, well, so what happened? He didn't ruin him. He took Jane instead. Yeah. Well, maybe she likes him. <laughs> you don't know much about women, do you, Matt? You think a boughten bride is likely to be in love with the man? So that's what I have to bring her back to. Well, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> what can I do, Kate? Just have to wait and see what turns up. <laughs> I waited. I waited a week. Carter was drunk the whole time, telling everybody how he was going to fix me good. And 
not doing much about it, except stay out of my way. And things were fairly quiet. Chester and I spent most of our time in the office. Well, he sure fooled me, Mr. Dillon. Now, oh, Carter? Yes, sir. He seemed like such a nice fella. And so rich. He's rich, all right. But poor in spirit. <laughs> You've been going to church again, Chester. Yes, sir, Mr. Dillon, last Sunday. Oh, last Sunday. Uh, didn't it uh, rain last Sunday? Oh, I like church, Mr. Dillon. But I sure do hate to get all dressed up. <laughs> You the marshal? Yeah, I am. Here you've been looking for a man and a woman. You know anything, mister? My name's Chad Brown. Just rode in from Satana. Yeah? There was a man and a woman about 80 miles back on the trail. What color horses were they on? Well, as soon as they saw me, they rode off, so I didn't get very close. But both horses were the same color. I guess maybe so. Yeah. Are you willing to ride back with me, Mr. Brown? I don't know, Marshal. I've got an awful thirst. That woman's out there against her will. I'll go. I'll get our horses. Uh, no, 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 Chester. Uh, be better if you wait here this time. We'll be back in a few days. With luck. Let's go, Mr. Brown. <laughs> Outlaw's trail headed south for a few miles and then turned northeast back in the general direction of Dodge. It was hot and still. On the horizon, there were occasional flashes of heat lightning. And then in the distance, we saw the long, low cloud of yellow dust that spelled cattle. A Texas herd trailing north. The kidnapper's tracks led straight into it, and an hour later, we pulled up not far from the swing of the herd. A line of long horns stretched for several miles across our trail. We watched them, looking for a lag to ride through. All of a sudden, a rider came hallooing down on us. Hold up! Hold up there! Oh! Oh, boy, oh! You ain't aiming to cross that herd, are you? Have you seen anything of a man and a woman around here, mister? Was they mounted? Yeah, a couple of sorrels. It don't matter. I ain't seen nothing but cattle and cowboys for six weeks. Besides, these cattle are plenty uneasy. They've been dry since yesterday morning. And that heat lightning ain't soothing to them. This herd's crossed the trail of an outlaw and a kidnapped woman, mister. That's so. Well, you just have to wait. You can ride around a drog back there. But you can't cut through this herd, mister. Look, I'm a U.S. Marshal out of Dodge, and I haven't got any time to waste. You think we well, can... Well, I possibly... sure appreciate your problem, Marshal, but I can't help you. I'm trail boss of this outfit, and I got 3,000 head of cattle here worth maybe $20 a head at Dodge. They're too nervy now, and I sure can't chance you're touching them off by riding through there. I guess he's right, Marshal. It'd be pretty risky from the look of them. They're moving too fast now. Yeah, I know. Just that I hate to lose the time. Well, you got more time than I got cattle, Marshal. Well, I don't know about that. But I won't tempt the stampede, mister. We'll ride around the drag. We'll see you in Dodge. The Alifraganza still running? Yeah, it is. Mostly on Texas money. Adios. <laughs> rode down along the herd and back up the other side, about a four-mile detour. But we picked up the trail again and followed it till dark. Next morning, we found the outlaw still headed straight for Dodge, and all we could figure was that he must be new to the country and just plain lost. Naturally, he'd want to avoid asking questions of anybody. By noon, we were inside of town, and during the last hour, neither Brown nor I said a word. Finally, we rode up Front Street and got down at the jail. Mr. 
Dillon? We got him, Mr. Dillon. They rode right in here early this morning. Gave himself up, huh? Yes, sir. I got the man locked up in back, and the money is over at the bank. Oh, good. How's the girl, Chester? Oh, she's fine. A little tired, but fine. Yeah. Well, what's his story? Who is he? He calls himself Scott Cooley, but he won't say anything more at all, Mr. Dillon. I, I just gave up on him. I thought I'd better wait for you. Yeah, all right. I'll talk to him first, and then I want to see the girl. Where is she? I didn't like it, Mr. Dillon, but I didn't see what I could rightly do about it. What do you mean? What happened? Well, she sure didn't want to go with him, but that Mr. Carter came here and just the same as dragged her off. She went finally, but I sure don't like it. Well, they didn't leave Dodge, did they? Oh, no, sir. There's no train till tomorrow. They're at the hotel. Oh, all right. I'll go over there later, Chester. Yeah, so you're Scott Cooley, huh? You're new around here, aren't you? Well, anyways, I never saw you before, Marshal. Well, I've tried hard enough to meet up with you, Cooley. You're in trouble, you know, bad trouble. Marshal, you've got anything to say, just say it right out. I got nothing to say. I'm just curious why you rode into Dodge, that's all. What do you care? I'm here. You got the money back and... Uh... And what? Oh, leave me alone, Marshal. Just leave me alone. You gotta talk sometime. Now listen, Marshal. I'm ready to serve my time. That's why I gave myself up. But talk, no. I don't have to talk. Not for you. Not for anybody else. Mm-hmm. All right, Cooley. Have it your way. Marshal. Yeah? Marshal, you... You going to... See, Jane? Yeah. Why? Well, what are you going to see her about? To find out what happened? Yeah. Marshal, I don't suppose you'd let me out of here just long enough to kill Carter. Now, you mean the girl told you about it? I him. wouldn't care if I hanged for it. It'd be worth it to kill him. Mm-hmm. Tell me something... What makes you think what you did's any better? What? Well, you wouldn't understand, Marshal. But you... Uh, you do what you can for her, will you? Anything else you want to tell me? No. That's all. <laughs> Matt Dillon. What do you want? Open the door, Carter. I want to talk to the girl. Some other time, Marshal. You want me to kick the door open? <coughs> You're asking for trouble, Carter. Uh, how do you do, miss? I'm Marshal Dillon. How do you do, Marshal? I, uh, I know you've been through a lot, miss, but I... I have to get the whole story from you so as I can file the proper charges against this outlaw, Scott Cooley. You want to use me to put him in prison? Is that it? Well, he's committed two crimes, robbery and kidnapping. We'll want him up for both. Well, doesn't the fact that he gave himself up and, and returned the money help at all? I, I'm afraid I don't gather your drift. Then let it go at that, Marshal. We're leaving Dodge on the next train. So Jane won't be here to testify anyway. No. Is that what you have in mind, Jane? Oh, no. I mean, I don't know. Oh, please. She's upset enough. Marsha, leave her alone. If I want anything out of you, Carter, I'll knock it out and I'll shut up. You can't talk to me like that. Wait. Marshal, I'll, I'll tell you all about it, but first... Yeah? Well, not in front of him. Make him go out and then I'll tell you. All right, Carter. Outside. Don't you order me around. This is my room. And... I'll throw you. Now, if I open the door and find you around, I'll throw you all the way downstairs. Now, get it. All right, now. Jane, you can talk. Can I trust you, Marshal? Really trust you? Well, 
That's up to you. But I'll tell you this. I know about Carter. About you and Carter, that is. Then you... You know how I hate him. Yeah? But right now I'm curious about this kidnapping. What happened? Why did Cooley give himself up? Because we decided we... We couldn't live being hunted down the rest of our lives. Ah. So you were in on it with him, huh? No, Marshal. The first time I ever saw Scott Cooley was when he held up the stage. I'd like to believe that. Very simple, Marshal. I love Scott Cooley. What? I love him. Oh, now look, Jane. Girls like you just don't go around falling in love with outlaws. Don't they, Marshal? No, they don't. I did. Then either you're crazy or you're lying to me. And if you weren't a woman, I'd throw you in jail right along with him. I'm a woman, Marshal, but I've no objection to going to jail with Scott. Now, then you admit you're his accomplice. No. I suppose it's hard for you to understand, Marshal. It is. Well, I'll try to make it simple. You see, Scott doesn't know why he took me with him when he held up the stage. He's never done anything like that before. It just seemed perfectly natural to him. He saw something he wanted, and he took it. That's all. I'm afraid the court will look at it somewhat differently. Well, I, I suppose he'll go to prison for the holdup, but, but not for kidnapping. And why not? Because I'll testify that I went with him of my own free will. I almost wish you two hadn't ridden back to Dodge. Marshal. Yeah. You said you know about Bob Carter and me. Yeah. Well, Scott's been wild and, and he's done wrong, but but he's never done anything really evil. Well, maybe you're better off with Cooley. If he straightens out. You know I am. Don't you, Marshal? It's no business of mine. I, I'm a peace officer and not a matchmaker. My job's to keep Cooley under arrest and get him up for trial, and that's all. Now, what you do is your own business. You can testify any way you like. I, I can't stop that. Oh, please. Marshal, help me. There's no one else who can. Yeah, who is it? It's Carter. Open this door. <laughs> well, gentlemen, there are four of us here, Marshal. We figure you've talked to Jane long enough. Yeah. Yeah, I think I have, Mr. Carter. You're leaving. Yeah. Yeah, we're leaving. Are you ready, Jane? Oh, thank you, Marshal. Yes, I'm ready. Jane isn't going with you. I've just put her under arrest. Under arrest? I arrest anybody I think needs arresting, Mr. Carter, and I'm not in the habit of explaining why. There's a law about that, You're Marshal. You're on Dodge, Mr. Carter. Come along, Jane. You can't do this, Dylan. We won't stand for ah, it. Ah, you're a fool, Carter. I know these three bums you got with you, and they don't want to draw on me any more than you do. You fed them some liquor and promised them more. For that, they'll do anything, anything but face me in a gunfight. Am I right, boys? Huh? Well, I take it I am. All right, now get out of my way. Huh? You go first, Jane. You stay here, Jane. Take your hands off her, Mr. <laughs> Just step over him, Jane. Mr. Dillon, I don't like to say anything. Well, then don't, Chester. But I can't help it, Mr. Dillon. This is the first time you've ever jailed a woman, and I just don't like it. <laughs> Good. What? I don't like it either, Chester. What's this all about, Mr. Dillon? Chester, Jane and Cooley are in love. My. <laughs> don't look so dewy-eyed about it. Cooley's got to stand trial yet, you know. I want no part of this, Marshal. Now what, Shiloh? I never did like that, Carter. Well, what's he up to? Oh, sir, he's drunk and he's buying liquor for everyone. He's making a lot of talk. 
There's about 20 men with him now. Where? Texas Trail. Nobody likes it about this girl. Looks like they'll come over here and try to bust her out of jail. Uh, Chester. Yes, sir? Those horses still out back. Yes, sir. I was going to put them away later. No, leave them, leave them. Uh, now, will you get over to the Texas Trail and stall those men for a while? Huh? All right, Mr. Dillon. Come on, Shiloh. Not me. I'm going to bed. I got two drunk last night. That's the worst hit Cooley? Mm -hmm. Come on up. What is this? Just Martin? hurry it up, will you? Let's go, Jane. Oh, no, no. Stay where you are, Jane. I don't You'll do like what this. I tell you, Cooley. It's all right, Scott. We can trust him. Yeah, but I don't know what he's Scott. got. Scott. Well. All right, Jane, if you say so. All right, now I'll back. Here, that way. Now, come on, let's move. All right, you take the gray horse, Jane. He's gentle enough. But hurry, will you? Sir, come here. Come on, come on boy. Oh. Where are we going, Marshal? We're going to Hayes City. Cooley's going to stand trial there. Yeah. They got the money back, Scott. They can't do much to you. I know. But there's that, that kidnapping, too. I won't testify. That's all. Jane, you're going to have to testify. You'll be in contempt of court if you... Refused. Then I'll lie. Anyway, I did go of my own free will. After a while, anyway. That's perjury. But you don't have to do that either. There's an easier way. How? Well, before I deposit Cooley in a Hayes City jail, we might just make a little stop. What do you mean, Marshal? Stop where? We, uh, we're going to stop at the preacher's. You know, a married woman can't testify against her husband. God. God. <laughs> Come on, honey, let's ride. Not exactly. You dress like a preacher. If you'll excuse me. Back up, fancy pants. If you ain't no preacher, I figure I'm making you dance some for the folks. You think you can hoorah me? Dude, I said dance. Dance or the next shot will take off one of your toes. I don't think I'd like that. Doc, no. All right, so on, put up the gun. Marshal, you got a wild and woolly town here. Marshal, you move aside. I'm going to make this grinning dude kick up his heels for us. I'd say that might be quite a trick, Thorne. Unless he's changed a lot since I last met him. Have you, Doc? Not for the good, Matt. <laughs> I was afraid. Well, you pacey face tender foot. I said for Shut you... Shut up, Thorne. He's drunk, Doc. He's dead. You he just don't know it yet. I'll take it good if you'd meet me later at my office. All right, Matt. To you. Well, that's sure a lot of talk. Now I'm going to shoot that dude's boot heels. Fire one shot and I'll pistol with you, Thorn. What's that? You're kind of forgetting who's holding a gun, ain't you? Oh! I wasn't forgetting. Oh, my wrist. You broke my wrist. I doubt it. Now let's go to jail. Oh, you can't put me in jail. I'm Thorn Finley. Move. Oh, you wait like hell, Big Jack, about this. And I will, too. Do that. He might be grateful to me for saving your neck. You pulled some fool stunts, Thorn, but you've never been closer to dying than just a minute ago. Do you mean from that fancy pants? Oh, I could handle six like him. That makes you a lot of men. I can name a dozen pretty good gun hands who can't handle one of it. What? That's Doc Holliday. <laughs> Salud. 
Salute, Matt. Salute, Doc. That sounds worse, Doc. Yeah, I got orders to go to Arizona. <coughs> Air's dry there, better for my lungs. Going? Thought I might. Wyatt invited me to visit him. He and Virgil and Morgan of the law down there. Some little mining town called Tombstone. <laughs> well, it sounds peaceful anyway. If it isn't, it will be by the time Wyatt Earp gets through. He is the peacemaking his man I ever met outside of you. <laughs> Matt, who was the teller head down at the depot anyway? No, oh, Thorne. He's just a spoiled kid. Kid? Couldn't be much younger than you. Sure, but Thorne never grew up. His father has coddled him and protected him and gotten him out of scrapes ever since he was a pup. He's never had to be a man. Not with Big Jack wet nursing him. Big Jack. Big Jack Finley. Oh, you know him? I've heard of him. Well, that figures. He owns about half of Kansas. Star in a box runs more cows than he can count. Swings a lot of weight and dodge? Yeah, too much. Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon, somebody said that Doc Holliday had come into town today and he... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> it's all right, Chester. Why don't you shake hands with him? Don't mind if I shake with my left hand. It's a kind of habit. Yeah, I know. Mr. Dillon has the same habit. He would. How about dinner tonight, Matt? Sure, sure. <coughs> How long will you be in Dodge? Not long. <coughs> Just till I finish a chore. Uh-huh. That, uh, chore have anything to do with Big Jack Finley? Might say so. It's gonna kill him. All right, Dylan. Turn him loose. You, uh, forgot to close the door, Mr. Finley. You're going to turn my boy loose, or I'm going to have to do it for you. You got a writ of habeas corpus? Writ? Thorne didn't commit no crime. The charges are drunk and disorderly, disturbing the peace, and attempted assault with a deadly weapon. I was. You still need a writ. But man, Judd and Nathan does what I say, and you know it. Don't you think I can get a writ? I'm sure you can and will. You always do. Then what's the point, Dylan? It's just a lot of useless red tape. It's a law. Close the door on the way out. All right, Thorne. Didn't I tell you Big Jack would get me out? When are you going to learn you can't play? Save the speech. The law can't touch a Finley. You ought to get smart, Marshal. Like you? Sure, like me. Hi, Big Jack. You okay, son? Fine. Anything else, Mr. Finley? Why, yes. Uh, uh, my boy here is a little boisterous sometimes. I know. High-spirited, you understand? Uh-huh. So? So I want to put a stop to all this nonsense of yours, arresting him every time he kicks up his heels a bit. Now, go on. Well... I'm offering you a job. Let's say, protecting my interests. Two hundred a month. And no work, naturally. <laughs> I see we understand each other perfectly. No work, of course. All I have to do is just shut my eyes whenever Junior here breaks the law, huh? I said we understand each other. There's no need to elaborate on it, Dylan. There's a big need. Only how do I explain to a person like you that some men don't wear a price tag? Huh? How do I explain how I feel about a so-called respectable citizen making the law his private doormat? Hey, you're nothing but the stupid gunman I've always thought you were. I understand you took the part of Doc Holliday against my son. I kept Thorne from committing suicide, yeah. And you sided with a notorious killer against an important citizen of this community. Now I'm telling you, Dylan. Holiday. I don't want him in Dodge tomorrow. Doc may be a gunfighter, but he's clear with the law, Finley, and a better man than your son will ever be. What? Why, I... That hurts, doesn't it? You... I'm serving notice, Marshal. You run that killer out of Dodge City, or I'll do it myself. <laughs> Big Jack Finley. 
cattleman and self-made king of southern Kansas. No better or worse than most of the men carving empires out of the West. Until love for his son blinded him to the fact that Thorn Fenley had gone bad. And from here on, I knew the war was on between Big Jack and me. So Big Jack Fenley's going to run me out of town, huh? No. Unless I do it first. Oh? I do something naughty, Matt? Well, you threaten a man's life. <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> and just between friends, man. Anything else, Doc? Not murder. Murder? I can give him an even break. Uh, with you, that's still murder. Uh, don't you think you better tell me about it? Mm-hmm. What if I don't tell you? Now, yeah, then my job's to warn Fenley and try to protect him. You're a tough man to be friends with, man. It applies to you, too, doesn't it? Guess maybe it does at that. Didn't realize how I put you on the spot by spouting off my good intentions. Sorry. Oh, forget it, forget it. <coughs> you want to talk to me? <coughs> All right. Remember a girl named Ruth Davis? Mm-hmm. Died in a riding accident a few months ago. Always wondered if it wasn't suicide. She lost her brother two weeks before that. No accident. No suicide. You sure? Sure. You know, Ruth and her brother ran a ranch alone. Mm -hmm. A man started pestering Ruth, and she hated him. Her brother kicked the man off the ranch. This fellow dry gulps Ruth's brother made it look like a robbery. You have any proof of this? Yeah. Ruth was afraid to go to the law, so she sent a letter to me. Here, read it yourself. She says the man was Finley and says she expects him to try and shut her up for good. Well, that doesn't mean it's Big Jack. I went to see Ruth's folks. They had her belongings. Among them, I found this. Hmm. Watch chain. Engraved J.F. on the class. Jack Finley. You see why I've got to kill him, Matt? He forced Ruth's horse over that cliff, sure. But do you still think she died accidental? No. But who's responsible is something for a court to decide. Court? With Finley's money and influence, he wouldn't spend five days in jail even if he was convicted, which he wouldn't be. He doesn't own the court. Maybe not, but it's still the most powerful man in the state against a dead girl whose only friend is Doc Holliday. How do you think a judge will decide? Doc, I'm going to ask you a favor. Make it one I can give. I got an idea, but uh, you must let me handle it my way. Give the law a chance. All right, Matt, I can wait. Thank you. I'll keep this letter in chain for a while. All right, but if the law fails, I'll brace Big Jack Finley when he walks out of the courthouse. Then you'll be bracing two men, Doc. Finley and me. Fine day. Well, you're up kind of early just to bring me a weather report, aren't you, Judge Nathan? Huh? Oh, well, I I want to see you. Now, go right ahead. You mind if I finish shaving? No, no, please do. Just thought I'd chat with you about the... Uh... Dr. Finley? Uh-uh. Uh, yes. It seems that Big Jack's very upset by your attitude. I'm not surprised. Feels you're a little rough on his boy. I am. And his boy's a little rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, perhaps Thorne is high-spirited, like uh, yesterday. Yesterday he was just plain high. Tell me, Judge Nathan, how do you like being on Fenley's payroll? Uh, what? You know, you used to be a pretty decent person. Oh, uh, you can't talk to me like... Yes, I can. I'm sending a copy of Thorne's record to the governor. Governor. And with it, I'm sending a list of the rich you've issued to get him out of jail and a copy of the court records. I've only tempered my justice with mercy, that's all. Thorne's been arrested for 18 offenses, convicted of 10, spent no time in jail, and paid a total of $15 in fines. I'd say you've been very merciful. Um, 
You said you were sending this to the governor. You haven't actually mailed it yet? No. You got an out. Not that I don't feel justified in any decisions I've made, but uh, such a report might cause undue talk at the Capitol. And ruin your political hopes. Well, my conditions are simple. Get off Finley's payroll now. Very well. And give me cooperation from here on, no matter who's involved. Do that and I shelve the report. I'll do it. Mr. Dillon, trouble's are making. What kind of trouble, Chester? It's Big Jack Finley, Mr. Dillon. He's rounding up his crew at the Alfraganza. They're going to ride Doc Holliday out of town on a rail. Did you cut yourself shaving? escort you out of town. On a rail? Yeah, that's the general idea. Here, take a shotgun. Yeah, I'll hide it under the covers, modest like. Yeah. I'll wait against the wall here. Good. That'll put them in a crossfire. If it comes to that. If there's enough of them, we're in a spot. Yeah, likely we are. You're risking your neck to save me some bruises. One I owe you, friend Matt. It's my job. Still one I owe you. I'll shoot the man who takes another step. You think you're going to stop us, Dylan? I think so. Me and Doc. Doc. Show him, Doc. Sure thing, Marshal. Look, boys, surprise. I sure do love surprises. Dylan, I've got a dozen men with me. Well, sure, about six of them will die, Finley, if you don't crawl out of here fast. And guess who'll die first, Big Jack? You there, Moncrief. I always figured you for some brains. Get your boss out of here, quick. You sure talking sense, Big Jack. Shut up, Moncrief. You showing yellow. Oh, but man, there's nothing here for us to die over. Listen to him, Finley. That greener Doc is holding has 18 buckshot in each barrel. He'll get slaughtered if he triggers that thing. And I'm getting edgy, Finley. And me, if I get a coughing spell, I'm liable to shoot without meaning to. All right, all right. <laughs> this is twice you have made a Finley back down. You'll never get a third chance. Let's get out of here. Matt, when are you going to arrest him? When I'm ready. Not long. I hope not. Getting impatient to see that man dead. your message, Marshal. I hope it's important. It is, Moncrief. How long have you been foreman for Big Jack? Fifteen, sixteen years. And you know him pretty well. Would he be the kind to kill a girl? No, of course not. Because he'd kill a man if he got mad enough that he wouldn't kill no girl, Marshal. Well, I have proof that he did. A girl and her brother. But it doesn't set right. I'm hoping you can help. What's your proof, Marshal? A letter that names Finley as the man. Ruth Davis wrote it before she died. Ruth Davis. And this watch chain was found with her belongings. It's engraved on the back. I know. I uh, was with Big Jack when he bought this chain in Chicago. It was right after his wife died. Big Jack wore it all the time? Mm. You uh, rode the right hunch, Marshal. What? Thorne is your man, just like you figure. He had a yen for the Davis girl, but he kept it quiet. Because he didn't want it known, she throwed him over. 
with the watch chain. Big Jack gave that to Thorne on his 25th birthday. Whole ranch can testify to that. Mm. Good. All right, thank you, Moncrief. You, uh, gonna try and arrest Thorne? Why? If Big Jack believes Thorne killed that girl, it'll break his heart. Broke her neck. If he don't believe it, then he'll protect Thorne. And, Marshal, there's not enough lawmen in the state of Kansas to make Big Jack give up his son. Judge Nathan. Uh, ho Holiday. Oh, yes, I've heard of you. I've heard of you too, Judge. Wonder which has heard the worst. Uh -uh. What's that? Uh, why, I, uh... Judge, I'm here on business. Oh, of course. Uh, come in, won't you? In my study here, so we won't be disturbed. Now... What is it, Marshal? I want you to swear out a warrant for Thorn Finley's arrest. Charge murder. You sure you want to go with me, Doc? I'm sure. <coughs> All right, hold up your right hand. Oh, no, Matt, you wouldn't make me a lawman. If you go, you go as my deputy. I'm not letting you make this a private fight. And yeah, with my friends, if they hear I wore a star. All right, Matt, it's your show. You swear to uphold and enforce the laws of this community, the state of Kansas, and the United States to the best of your ability as deputy marshal, so help you God. All of that? All of that. I swear. Here, pin on this badge. All right, man. You know, I'm feeling this badge is going to cramp my style something terrible. We better breathe our horses going up through this pass. We've still got a good ride ahead. How far? Oh, about ten miles. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Matt? Will they fight? Well... on the other side of the pass behind you. That's being smart, Dylan. Queen will drop you if you touch a gun butt. You're handy at this bushwhacking, aren't you, Thorn? If Doc He's has... all right. My slug seems to have bounced off his thick skull. Good. Yeah, let's pull your teeth. Well, better you do it. With your left hand, reach down and across slow. Pull your gun out with your fingertips and toss it away. Nervous? Just cautious. Or maybe this queen doesn't exist, huh, Thorn? Queen! Queen's one of Dad's men, but uh, I pay him extra to work for me. Any more questions? Uh, I guess not. There's my gun. The rifle next. I, uh, I got a pen knife in my pants pocket. You know why Holiday came to Dodge? Yeah. Yeah, I guess you do. You wouldn't be riding with him. Well, he's not going to tell any stories to my dad or anyone else. Uh, you can't kill us, you stupid... Not planning on killing you. And what have you got planned? A queen's kind of a magician. He's going to make Holiday just disappear folks won't care much about one of his kind. I would. I'd care so much I'd hang you for it. No. No, with Holiday gone, it's your word against mine. And you won't be able to approve a thing, Dylan. You sure of that? I'm sure. Otherwise, I'd take care of you along with Holiday. Now get out and start walking back to town. It's like I told you. 
Law can't touch a Finley. It was no time for heroics, so I walked. When I reached a turn, I cut back through the rocks, but it was too late. They were gone. And with them, the horses, guns, and Doc Holliday. Two miles up the road, I found my horse turned loose. And with a mind full of cold hate, I raced on to the star in a box. On the front porch of the ranch house was one of Big Jack's men. Hold it right there. Out of my way, mister. I'm in no mood to shake hands. Where are you heading, law man? You don't hear well. <laughs> Where's Holiday? Friendly? How should I know? Get off my ranch. And where's that prize son of yours? What? Trot him out. I want him. Do you now? What on earth for? Thorn, put that gun away. Oh, no. This is just in case the marshal loses his temper. I've lost it, Junior. Sure. Dylan, I've had all I'm going to stand from you. You just think you have. Where's Holiday, Thorn? Where'd Queen take him? Holiday? Why, well, I haven't the faintest idea. Where is Queen, Dad? The righty fence line, but... See, what... Marshal, we don't know where your friend is. You're under arrest, Thorn. What's that? Ask him to show the warrant. Here. Read it, Finley. What? Oh, no. No, th th that's not possible. The judge wouldn't issue a warrant without proof. He has proof, Thorn. This is a lie. Thorn couldn't be guilty of murder. No. Take a look at his face. Son. Daddy's trying to frame me. D don't let him get away with this. No, I won't. I won't. Get out, Dylan. Man, open your eyes. This is not going to help you. You heard me. I don't believe you, your warrant, or your proof. I believe my son. So get off this ranch. Get out of the state. You let me see you again, so help me, I'll kill you myself. Forget me. You're back in the law. You can't I'm in my own law. You so do I. Doc Holliday. But you're supposed to be dead. Queen was supposed Queen's to... the one who's dead. I carry a knife in my boot just for men like him. Hmm. Thorn, God help me. You are guilty. He sure is. And if he knows any prayers, he'd better get them over with. No, Doc. He goes back with us as our prisoner. You're wrong, Marshal. I'll take care of my son. Dad. Dad, no. You rotten, lying, murderous. Please, pup. please don't. I Dad. should have strangled Stand you in the me. cradle when you were. Stand away from the shoot. Don't shoot all. Manley, look out. I threw myself at Finley and both of us hit the floor, rolling away from Thorn as he raised his gun to fire. Then in the doorway, the blood-stained, terrible figure of Doc Holliday went into action. His pale hands blurred over his holster. Uh, the roof, Thorn! Uh, 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 Ruth? Uh, uh, Thanks, Chester. You sure you won't stay around a while, Doc? Yeah, we're good friends, Matt, but you're a peace officer. I guess I'm not a very peaceful man. <laughs> you could be, Doc. <laughs> no, I'm not going to change, and you shouldn't. Law needs men like you. No, if I stayed there, there's too good a chance I might cross you. Yeah. Then I'd have to meet you over gun barrels, and it's one thing I'm afraid of. So long, Matt. Good luck, Doc. My. I never would have thought Doc Holliday was scared of meeting anyone in a gunfight. Hmm. You don't understand, Chester. Doc's afraid because he might beat me. Jeannie, what's 
What's the matter? Good morning, Miss Wells. Good morning, Chester. Matt, I've got to talk to you. Sure. Uh, Chester? Uh, you folks will have to excuse me. I, I can't be puttering around the office all day. I'll be in the back if you want me. Yeah? Matt, he's here in Dodge City. I just saw him. He came in on the morning train. You mean Ed Beaudry? Yes. It's been four years, Matt. I'd begun to hope he'd forget. Hope he wouldn't find us. From what you've told me, Beaudry doesn't sound like a man who ever forgets. He's come here looking for Bert. To kill him, he swore he would. Matt, what are we going to do? I don't know. What's Bert think about it? He doesn't know yet. He's busy at the blacksmith shop. Matt, you've got to help us. You're the only real friend we have out here. It might make it easier if I weren't, Janie. I'm supposed to maintain law and order and dodge. That's my job. Doesn't leave much leeway to mix in on personal quarrels. Well, there's no quarrel. It's just that Ed Beaudry's a hot-tempered fool. Bert never did anything to him. He married you, didn't he? A woman has a right to change her mind, Matt. Maybe Beaudry doesn't think so. Matt, you... You promised me once in Louisville... Yeah. Yeah, I know. All right, Jeannie, go on home and uh, don't say anything to Bert. I'll talk to Beaudry. Thank you. I'll never forget it. I... I... Goodbye, Matt. Chester. Yes, sir, I'll, I'll be right there, Mr. Dillon. Did Miss Wells leave? Yeah. Fine couple of Wellses. Did you know them before they came out west? I'm not Bert. I do, Mrs. Wells. I guess we better drop over to the Texas Trail, Chester. There's a fella in town planning to do some killing. <laughs> Long time. Hiya, Kitty. Hello, Chester. Miss Kitty. Uh, come sit down, Matt. Tell me about things. I can't right now, Kitty. We're looking for a fellow. Thought he might have come in here. Sooner or later, they all do. Stranger, Matt? Uh, yeah. He came in on the morning train. His name's Ed Beaudry. Oh, him? There, the bar, Matt. Third from the end, next to Tulsa Jim Nixon. He's buying Irish whiskey for everybody. Thank you, Kitty. Come on, Chester. Yes, sir. Watch yourself, Max. Yeah, sure, Kitty. I'll see you later. All right, bartender. Set up another round of Jamesons for the house. <laughs> Your name, Beaudry? Oh, that's right, mister. Matt Dillon. I'm a U.S. Marshal here. I'd like to talk to you. Fine. Go ahead and talk. Uh, Tulsa, suppose you'll move on down the bar for a couple of minutes, huh? Oh, well, now, uh, dear Marshal, this man's a friend of mine. You're not very particular about your friends. Now, go on, Tulsa. Drift. Mr. Beaudry, you, uh, you came here to kill Bert Wells, didn't you? Did I? Well, here's some advice. Don't do it. Take the next train and get out of town. Is that official? Just what's the charge, Marshal? None. Yet. Murder, if you go through it. Well, not the way I understand it. Murder's one thing. Calling a man in a fair fight, that's another thing. Beaudry, I'm the law here in Dodge, and I don't see it as a fair fight. Bert's a blacksmith, and he's not used to handling a gun. You are. And so I'm told. Who told you, Marshal? I don't know anybody here. And... Wait a minute. Dylan? Yeah. I heard Jeannie mention you. You knew her back in Louisville before she ran off. We'll with leave you. her out of this, Beaudry. So that's it. This isn't official. You're just doing a personal favor for an old friend. Probably a very close friend. Jeannie always did have a weak... I warned you once. <laughs> All right, hold it. Now get up, Beaudry. That was a mistake, Dylan. Now I'll have to kill you, too. I'm not a blacksmith, Beaudry. I'll look you up just as soon as I've finished with Bert Wells. If you kill Bert, you won't have to look me up. Bert, a 
Now, Bert. Huh? Oh, Matt. I didn't see you come in. Uh, I wanted to talk to you, Bert. About what, Matt? Ed Beaudry's in town. Beaudry? Well, it was bound to happen sometime. Has he been bothering Jeannie? No, she just happened to see him get off the train this morning. She came and told me. She shouldn't have done it, Matt. It's not your problem. Maybe it is, Bert. I'm the law in Dodge, and the law doesn't like the idea of personal grudges ended up in a killing. What do you aim to do? Yeah, prevent it if I can. Well, I wish you luck. You haven't worn that gun for two years, Bert. Why start now? I've got no choice, Matt. You know that. You mean you got no chance. Now, if you let Beaudry call a showdown, he'll kill you. Maybe. Look, Bert, why don't you take to the prairie, hold up for a week or so while I figure some way of running Beaudry out of town, huh? Would you do it, Matt? Hide out and let somebody else do your fighting for you? Well, what I'd That's do is... That's beside the point, Bert. Jeannie. There's a law against killing. And it's Matt's job to enforce it. If you went away, there wouldn't be any fight. Wouldn't be much honor either, Jeannie. Man can't run and still call himself a man. He can run from a mad dog. And that's what Ed Beaudry is. He never had any claim on me. It appears he thought he did. Matt, you know where Beaudry stand? I talked to him in the Texas Trail. He probably took one of the rooms upstairs. Like to walk over there with me? Well, if that's the way you want it. No, Bert, you... you... I'll get my hat. Be right with you. Matt, you've got to stop it. Yeah? How? I don't know. But there must be something you can do. Yeah, there is. Boy, it's shaping up. I can probably arrest the survivor. Still time to turn back, Bert. I'm afraid not, Matt. I should have had it out with Beaudry back there in Kentucky five years ago. Jeannie wanted to run away and avoid trouble, and she was so beautiful it was hard to argue with her. Yeah, I know. Be hard on her if anything happened to you. Life's always hard on a woman, I guess. Worse out here on the prairie. Look out for her, Matt, in case I... Well, I mean, if anything... Mr. Dillon? Huh? Oh, what is it, Chester? Beaudry left the saloon a little while ago. Went over to the livery stable to hire a horse. Oh? I think he's riding out to your place, Mr. Wells. He's been doing a lot of talking. Jeannie will be there alone, Matt. I better get back home. It won't be necessary. Here comes Beaudry now. I won't draw unless he does, Matt. Heads up, Chester. Yes, sir. Just riding out to call on you, Wells. I decided you'd had plenty of time to look me up. No reason to, Baudry. Most men would figure they had reason. Somebody been in a local saloon, telling their wife's history. What, Baudry, you... All right, hold it. Don't draw, Bert. Chester, cover Baudry. Just keep your hands still, Mr. Baudry. You're fast with that gun, Dylan. Fast enough, Mr. You make Beaudry. a good bodyguard. Too bad you can't ride her 24 hours a day. I told you what to expect if you keep pushing this thing, Mr. Beaudry. Now use some sense and get out of town while you're still alive. I've been in lots of towns, Dylan. I left them all alive. Wells, I've been planning to kill you for five years. Plans don't always work out. Listen, Will. You got till sundown. After that, I'm going to shoot you on sight. All right, Mr. Beaudry. If you finish speaking your piece, move along. Why, surely, Mr. Dillon. See you later. Well, still a 
a couple of hours before sundown. I think I'd like to spend them with Jeannie. I'll see you, Matt. Yeah, sure. Goodbye, Bert. I declare I, I just can't see any way of stopping it, Mr. Dillon. I can't either. I'd sure hate to be in Bert Wells' shoes. I'd hate worse to be in Baudry's. He'll never submit to arrest. Chester, I'm going to have to kill him. Why don't you relax, Matt? You're nervous as a cat. Yeah, and I'll stay nervous, Kitty, until I find out what's happened to those two. Baudry slipped out the back way just at dusk. Piano player saw him. Yeah. Well, Bert pulled the same trick. I had a couple of boys watching the blacksmith shop, but he managed to give them a slip. There's nothing you can do now, Matt. Well. Uh, Another killing. And you in the middle again. Why, Matt? Why do you do it? It's a job, Kitty. Somebody's got to do it. But why you? There are other things in life if you look around for them. Well, maybe I will someday. Will you look my way, Matt? Well, Matt, I... I brought my kit. I'm all prepared. Ah, uh, where are the victims? No victims yet, Doc. You're jumping the gun. Well, I understand it's going to be a real showdown. The boys at the bar are offering two to one on Baudry. That's about the odds, I figure, if the shooting really starts. Oh, it'll start all right. Oh, and there's not a thing in the world can stop it. Dill? Chester, what are you doing in here? I told you to watch that street. Yes, sir, I know you did. The fight's there... as likely to start out there as any place else. No, sir, Mr. Dillon. I guess there's not going to be any fight. What? They just found Baudry lying in an alley down the block. Matt. Somebody sneaked up behind him with a hammer. He's sure dead. <laughs> Mr. Dillon? No. Not the shop either. He might have skipped out. Well, what about his wife, though? I don't know, Chester. I can't figure any of this. It's not like Bert to pull a sneaking trick like that. Hold it. Don't move. He's there by the tree, Chester. Yes, sir. Bert? Who is it? Who's that? Matt. Chester's with me. You better put away the gun. All right, Matt. I thought it was somebody else. Who, Bert? Well, you, you know who. Baudry, of course. Guess I better take your gun. Official, Matt? Official. Well, I got no quarrel of the law. <laughs> Here. Thank you. Now, why did you do it? What do you mean? If it had been a gunfight, the law couldn't have touched you. Now, the circumstances are all in your favor. But this way, they'll call it murder. And they'll be right, because that's what it was. Matt, what are you talking it's about? It's no use. You left the hammer lying right beside his body. It's got your shop brand carved in the handle of it. Whose body are you talking about? You mean Baudry? Yeah, sure, Baudry. Matt, you're making a mistake. I went looking for Baudry, yes, but I didn't find him. And I come back here. I was afraid to leave Jeannie there in the house alone. I, I didn't do it, Matt. You're wrong. It's not up to me, Bert. It's the court's job. All I can do is take you in. The evidence is too strong and I got no choice. No choice? I didn't have a choice either. We must have had a choice somewhere back down the line. When? 
Where was it? We could have stopped and turned back. I'm a marshal, not a philosopher. Now, let's go. What about Jeannie? I've got to tell her. Chester will take care of it. It'd be better if you'd do it, Matt. You're a friend. That'd make it easy. I'd rather not if you don't mind. Now, come on, let's go. Step inside. Four years we've been friends, Matt. I never thought it would come to this. Neither did I. You said you didn't find any money on him. It could have been robbery. Or made to look like robbery. But either way, there's nothing I can do. Now, you better step inside. I'll, uh... I'll bring you some blankets and tobacco. If you want anything else, let me know. Wish I knew how Jeannie was taking it. She'll be all right. She's a fine girl. Matt. Matt, look out for her, will you? Bert, a man's job is one thing, friendship's another. This prairie country is rough and tough and wild at the best. And without the law, nobody could survive in it. And that means putting friendship aside sometimes. But a man still doesn't forget. Yeah, I, I'll look out for her. Thanks, Matt. I'll see you later. There you get your prisoner. Tucked in safely, Matt. <laughs> what about Baudry? He's dead. Absolutely dead. Like I never saw anybody any deader. Blacksmith hammer makes a mighty fine weapon. Yeah. At least for sneaking up behind. I can't figure Bert doing that. It's not like him. Sometimes a man changes under pressure, Doc. Yeah, I can't figure it either. What would you say his chances are? Bad. Straws all point one way. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe somebody's been messing with the straw stack. Who? That's a good question, man. Well, the court will ask it. Yeah, if he ever gets there. What do you mean? I just come from Texas Trail a while ago, and some of the boys are kind of riled up. They're talking real loose. No law against talking. Yeah, doubt if they aim to leave it at talking, Matt. They figure the evidence is a little on the weak side. A court might turn Bert loose. So they're saying it's up to them. Yeah, they're just mad because they've lost their source of free drinks. Well, maybe so, but you better keep your eyes open, Matt. Yeah, I know that pack, Doc. They hunt in the dark and pull down stragglers. And mostly they just talk. So don't worry. Bert's in jail, and that's where he's going to stay. <laughs> I want to see Bert. No visitors after dark. It's a jail rule. Rules don't have to be enforced. Mine do. Bert's a prisoner, same as any other prisoner. He's charged with murder. He didn't do it, Matt. It's not for me to say. But you know he didn't. You know Bert. You know he wouldn't do a thing like that. Sneak up behind a man's back in the dark. I'm not the court, Jeannie. I know. And they'll believe he did it. Yeah, the night train's coming in. Hope it's not bringing in trouble. The morning train did. Matt, I want to see Bert. I told you that you... Why, you little fool. <laughs> Give me the gun, Jeannie. No, I warn you, Matt, stay Give back. Give me the gun. No, Matt. So help me, I I'll... said hand it over. <laughs> You knew I 
wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> now, what did you hope to gain by that? I don't know. Get Bert out. Maybe I don't know. None of this is his fault. Something's got to be done. Matt, you've got to help me. Easy. <laughs> Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? I, I just come from the Texas Trail. I think there's going to be some trouble. Trouble? The bunch that hangs out around there are doing a lot of drinking and talking up the idea of coming over here to the jail. Oh, no. Well, maybe we ought to go over there and do some talking ourselves. Jeannie, I think the best thing for you to do is to go back home and stay there till morning. But... Now, don't worry about this. Nothing's going to happen. Oh, but, Matt, you can't handle that crowd alone. I've been handling things alone for a long time. All right, Chester. Those are Jim Nixon's, the one who's been agging them on, Mr. Dillon. Over there at the end of the bar. Yeah, he struck up an acquaintance with Baudry when he first got off the train. Guess he figures he's an old partner by now. Well, come on. Yes, sir. Matt, Matt, wait. Later, Kitty, I got some business with the boys at the bar. That's what I mean. Tulsa Jim's been buying them drinks the last two hours. They're in a real nasty mood. So? So be careful, Matt. That's all. Just be careful. Kitty, I'm the carefulest man you know. Sure, sure. We got the law here in Dodge. Supposedly. But what kind of a law is it that lets a man sneak up behind somebody in the dark and murder him in cold blood? I don't know, Tulsa. Suppose you tell me. Dylan. Now, don't let me interrupt you. You were doing fine. Well, this is quite an audience you've got. All the panhandlers, bums, and barflies, and dodge. It's quite a collection. Well, calling names won't change the facts, Dylan. What facts? A friend of yours, Bert Wells, had sneaking, cowardly murder. That's for the court to decide, Tulsa. The court. They'll turn them loose. They work hand in glove with you. Dylan, we're not going to stand for it. All right, shut up! So you're not going to stand for it, huh? Well, just what are you planning to do? You'll find out in due time, Dylan. Go oh, tend to set them up again all around. Yeah, you've turned into quite a free spender, Tulsa. I never knew you to... Ah, a double eagle gold piece. You mind if I take a look at it? It's good. Don't worry about that. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Where'd you get it? That's my business, Dylan. So you're the one who killed Baudry. That's a lie. I thought robbing him was just a cover-up, but it wasn't. There aren't many double eagles around Dodge. Baudry had a lot of them. Now you. Why would you get a pocket full of gold pieces, Tulsa? Wells killed Baudry. The blacksmith hammer was lying right beside him. Yes, where you left it. Hey. What does she mean? Tulsa Jim came into my husband's shop late this afternoon. His horse had thrown a shoe. He had plenty of chance to steal that hammer. She's lying. Where did you get the gold, Tulsa? I, well, I, I, won it, well, I won it in the poker game. Last week when, well, when the trail herd would... Tulsa, you're under arrest for murder. Oh. No, you'll never take me! Get out! All right, Doc. You better get up an inquest. Uh, confound it, Matt. You, you never give me any chance to practice on live people. Yeah. You wouldn't know what to do with them, Doc. Well, I, I do get fewer complaints this way. Matt. Matt, does this mean that Bert's free? You shouldn't have come here, Jeannie. Yeah, he's free. Chester will go with you over to the jail and let him out. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for everything. You told me one time in Louisville that... Louisville? That was a long time ago and a long way off. So, uh... Goodbye, Jeannie. Goodbye, Matt. What's it all about, Matt? What? What's anything all about, kidding? Professor, what do you say? We'll just have a little tune, huh? 
Why, sure thing, Mr. Dillon. What'd you like to hear? Oh, uh, how about that one of Foster's, uh, Genie. Genie with the light brown hair. You bet. You knew her before, didn't you, Matt? Yeah, I met her in Louisville one summer. Saw her quite a lot for a couple of months. And then I drifted out west. A man misses out on things by drifting. I told her then if she ever needed help to to call on me. Well, she called, and you helped her. Yeah, I guess. Oh, well, anyway, uh, that's that. Matt. Yeah. Yeah, Kitty. When are you going to help yourself? Got you. Wild Hog, you there? Who are you? Put that spear down. And listen, Wild Hog and me are friends, big friends. You'll make much noise. You're a Cheyenne, ain't you? You must be with Wild Hog. What name, you white man? I'm Ord Spicer. Ord Spicer, you hear? You bother me and you'll be in big trouble with Wild Hog. No trouble. Tell these other redskins to put their spears down. I need more room. Come, white man. Are you with Wild Hog or ain't you? Much talk, come. All right. Any tricks, I'll shoot you first. Here you walk. Blasted. Why can't he ride out like anybody else? I want to be in Dodge tonight. Come. It's me. It's Ord Spicer, all right. Yes. These braves of yours sure keep you covered. You can't tell one from another, except you, of course. Hayden thought maybe I'd run into the wrong Indians. No moon tonight. Oh, I recognized them as Cheyennes, all right, but you never know with... With... With what, Spicer? Nothing, Wild Hog. Forget it. You never know with Indians... Now, Wild Hog, you and me are friends. Don't get so touchy. I didn't mean nothing. We are not friends. I pay you. That is all. Sure, we're friends. You're about the most educated Indian I ever met, that's why. I learn only English from the white men. Nothing else. Well, you sure had a good teacher, fella. General Custer, many bitter moons ago. I was a scout. Don't matter. I never heard of him. He was killed. Well, that's nothing to do with me. You got the money, Wild Hog? Yes. Here. Five hundred dollars. Five hundred? Our deal was for a thousand. You will get the rest later. But I'm running a big risk for you, Cheyennes. This is mighty dangerous work, Wild Hog. It will be even more dangerous if we do not meet again, Spicer. 
Oh, Wild Hog, you can trust me. I'll be back, you know that. Yes. When? Ooh, two, three days. Where will I find you? Make camp near here. We'll find you. Okay. I'll get on into Dodge now. Goodbye, Wild Hog. Don't get drunk, Spicer. <laughs> Never touch it. Hey, bartender. Set out another bottle of whiskey for me and my friend. Uh, what you say you're called, stranger? Orge Spicer, friend. Mm-hmm. Here, let me fill your glass. Some time you got here, Dodge. You're sure easy with your money, Spicer. Nothing's too good for my friend. Say, what name you go by anyway? You got a lot of money, Spicer. Sure, I got money. I'll have more soon. You must have hit it rich, huh? <laughs> sure, I hit it rich. Easy money, friend. Easy money. How'd you do it, Spicer, anyway? Friend, I live like a gambler. My life's chicken one day and feathers the next. Right now, it's all chicken. Yeah, but uh, how'd you do it? You made out real good, Spicer. Brains and guts, friend. Brains and guts. That's all it takes. I know, I know, but but how? You don't get money like that robbing old Indians. What's that? Huh? What'd you say about Indians? Well, it's just a way of saying it back home. Don't get on the prod about it. Maybe you talk too much. Maybe you ask too many questions. Hey, what's the matter with you, anyway? Maybe you know too much. Look, Spicer, if you're hiding something, don't trouble yourself. I ain't interested in you, or your money, or your liquor. I don't like that. You don't have to. You bet I don't. Keep your eyes right on mine, Spicer. I want to watch you die. Chester. I got two, Mr. Dillon. You got two? Yes, sir. There's that Ord Spicer fellow you locked up, and then there's a drunk who tried to buffalo me after you went to bed. No? Uh-huh. Did you have any trouble with him? A little, Mr. Dillon. He tried to hit me on the head with his six gun. Well, you look all right. Oh, he didn't do it, sir. I bit his thumb and kneed him at the same time. <laughs> well, that's quite a trick, Chester. You must have been practicing. No, sir. I haven't been practicing. But I had it all thought out. <laughs> I see. All right, let's turn Spicer loose. I'll go get him, Mr. Dillon. About time. Where's my gun, Marshal? There it is, Spicer. And uh, don't use it around here anymore. You can't bother a man for self-defense. I just want you to stay out of Dodge. One kill at your limit here, even in self-defense. I ain't a fear to you, Marshal. Besides, this is a poor town anyways. You can have it. My. That man would kick a hog barefoot him. <laughs> yeah, he sure would, Chester. There's something real bad about him. Yeah, I don't know what it is, Chester, and I hope I don't have to find out. Well, you'll go away. Fellas like that got to keep moving. Seems like nobody wants him. Now, don't feel sorry for him, Chester. He got that way all by himself. Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. Morning, Marshal. Those greeners get here yet, Jack? Yep. Come in on the Santa Fe yesterday, Marshal. Four of them. Uh, right back here. Oh, good. 
Beautiful guns, ain't they? Just beautiful. <laughs> You're a good storekeeper, Jack, but I only need two of them. Well, I can make you a good price on all four, Marshal. Well, it wouldn't be any good if I don't need four, would it? Well, maybe not, but I never know. I got half a dozen forty-four sharps rifles, same shipment. Thought I'd be stuck with them forever. Well, with the big 50 out now, there ain't a Buffalo Hunter to use a 44 anymore. I don't see any 44s. Well, that's just what I'm telling you. Feller stopped in just this morning, took all six. Paid me $75 a piece, too. You sold six rifles to one man? That's right, Marshal. Was he a Buffalo Hunter? Well, looked more like a drifter to me. Had plenty of cash, though. You know his name? No idea. Nothing wrong with it, was there, Marshal? Been a holdup around here I haven't heard about? No, no. A lot of rifles for one man to buy. No log in it, is there? What'd this man look like, Jack? Tall, skinny, kind of mean face. Mm-hmm. You wear a one-six gun with black grips? Yeah. Come to think of it, he did. You know him? Yeah. Lord Spicer. He killed a man last night. Talk to him. Well, now I heard about that shooting. What do you suppose he's up to now? Where'd he go? No, packed the rifles on a mule and rode out of town. You going after him, Marshal? No, no. It's like you say, Jack, there's no law against a man buying all the rifles he wants. Seems strange, that's all. Well, let's settle on the price for those screeners, huh? Next day, Chester and I took the new greeners and rode out for a prairie chicken. We had a sack full within an hour, and we headed back to town, arguing on the way as to whether we'd bake the birds whole or just cut the breasts off and broil them. We still hadn't settled the matter when we reached Dodge, and we never did. The stage from Hayes City had arrived half hour before, bringing with it the bodies of two men found alongside the road. They were just laying there, Marshal, about five miles back. Both shot dead, but I thought I'd better bring them in anyway. Did you recognize them, Pete? No, Marshal, I didn't. The doc says they're a couple of riders from the T-Bar outfit. Yeah. He got them up in his office now. You bring in their horses? No sign of a horse. But there was an awful lot of tracks around. All right. I'll go see if Doc's found anything. Uh, hang around, Pete, will you? I may want some more information from you. Okay, if I do my waiting at the Alifraganza, Marshal? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. I'll put our horses up, Mr. Dillon. Uh, yours, Chester. I may want mine. Yes, sir. Just finishing up here. Be right with you. How'd they die, Doc? Well, they got half shot and then shot dead, Marshal. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But uh, is there any way of telling if maybe they killed each other? Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Now, that does it. No, there is, Marshal, but I'd be mighty surprised if they did. Now, what do you mean, Doc? Well, they were cowboys, Marshal. Cowboys just don't generally carry buffalo guns. Here, take a look. What? I dug some of these out of each of them. Those are slugs from a sharps rifle, Marshal. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. That one's the best I found, right there. Yeah. Yeah. What caliber did you say this is, Doc? Oh, I'd guess 44. Yeah. 44 sharps. Mm -hmm. Not many 44s in use around here since the big 50 came out. I know a man with six of them, Doc. Hmm? Hmm. What do you think of that? I'll let you know when I get back. So long, Doc. stage driver rode with me back to where he found the bodies, and from there I rode on alone. It was an easy trail at first. There must have been more than a dozen horses running together. Long toward dusk, however, they suddenly split up, and I was faced with two different trails to follow. I made a gambler's choice and rode harder than ever. There was only an hour of light left to track by when 
My horse stepped into a prairie dog hole and snapped his leg and went over hard. My head glanced off a rock. There was a shower of light and nothing. That's him, all right. That's Dylan. He's a marshal at Dodge, I told you about. I think he is not dead. Hmm? Stop. Stop. Put away your gun. But you can't let him live. He'd kill us, all right. I'm going to kill him anyway. You'll die for it if you do. Okay. You're the boss. But you'll wish I'd shot him. Uh, He's coming to now. (sighs) We take care of him our own way. White Cloud, pick up his gun. Yeah, he isn't hurt. Just knocked out, that's all. Indians. Cheyennes. I'm no Indian, Marshal. Spicer. Yeah. Sure. No tricks now, Marshal. These redskins will shoot you to pieces. Yeah. Are those new Sharps 44s you bought them, huh, Spicer? It's no business of yours, Marshal. Not now. You're through. You're all the way through. Spicer, you're under arrest. What? I said you're under arrest. (laughs) Now, Marshal, what are you arresting me for? Not that it matters much. For selling guns to Indians and on suspicion of murder. All right, so I'm under arrest, but, Marshal, I want to ask you something. Yeah. How are you going to take me in, that's all? Just how are you going to manage it? I'll worry about that. You sure will. Come on, Wild Hog. Let's shoot him and get it over with. This is a man of much heart. I admire his courage. To stand with death on all sides and arrest a man. No, we will not kill him. Not yet. But you can't take him with us. White Cloud, give him a horse. Come. They gave me a horse, all right, with the T-Bar brand on it. But I was surrounded by six armed Indians and a no-good white who'd shoot me any time he thought he could get by with it. Wild Hog rode up ahead, leading the party northwest, apparently to rendezvous with a bunch that had split off from this one. Spicer stayed right alongside of me. Well, am I still under arrest, Marshal? You're still guilty, aren't you? Sure. I'll admit it. Don't matter, being as how you'll never see Dodge again or any other place. What are you doing with these Cheyennes here anyway, Spicer? I got a deal with Wild Hog, Marshal. Real good deal. Killing white men, part of it? (laughs) They don't need any help there, Marshal. They like to kill white men. Maybe they'll kill you before they're through. No, I'm too valuable to them. They like me. No? Now, why would they like you? Well, they didn't at first. But I talked them into it. Talked Wild Hog into it. He's a smart fella, that Indian. Saw right away what I could do for him. Like buying those rifles. What else did you do for him? Well, I stopped those two riders with the horses. Told them I was sick. Got them off guard. Those Cheyennes were on before they could move. It was real easy. You're kind of like a Judas sheep in a slaughter pen, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's it, Marshal. Pays better, though. I got $500 coming since we find a rancher to the raid. I see. Pretty good deal, huh? You know, I think a lot more of these Indians than I do of you, Spicer. I don't like that, Marshal. At least they got an argument on their side. But you're just a renegade white. I'll kill you for that, Marshal. Now, shut up. All right, you've asked for it. Shoot me and Wild Hog will split you wide open, Spicer. Besides, he spotted the rest of his party up there. Huh? Oh, yeah. All right for now, Marshal. But I'll see you dead. I promise I'll see you dead. (laughs) 
I was still alive two days later when we crossed the Smoky Hill River about 100 miles northwest of Dodge. There were 15 Cheyennes in the party. And day and night, two of them, by turns, never took their eyes off of me. They seemed anxious for an excuse to cut my throat. And I had to watch every movement I made. Looked pretty hopeless. Wild Hog was smart, and he took no chances. But often, he and I rode along together, though always flanked by my two warrior guards. Country is greener already. Better every mile. Why have you been raiding so far south, Wild Hog, if you like this land better? We are northern Cheyenne, Marshal, in the Bighorn Mountains. The army took us south to a reservation in the Oklahoma Territory. Oh, so that's it. You jumped your reservation, huh? Why should we live in a hot, flat land that has no game? But the army will be after you again. You've broken the law. Whose law? Ours or yours? All right, Wild Hog. But the Indian has a law against murder. You've broken that twice that I know of. Cheyenne does not speak of it as murder to kill his enemy. Those cowboys weren't your enemy, Wild Hog. They weren't fighting you. The army drove us from our home in the mountains. The army took our horses from us. We are going back home now on other horses, that's all. That doesn't explain your killing. Those men were peaceful. Marshal, if I could, I would kill every white man in the country. But I cannot. The Indian nations cannot. Red man has always fled before the white man. Those cowboys weren't chasing you. We needed their horses. They didn't even have a chance to fight. You tricked them. Is it only the white man who was allowed to trick his enemy? I was young once, Marshal, but I have seen too much trickery and lies and destruction and broken promises. I'll admit that's happened, Wild Hawk. But you know, not every man is a liar and a killer... No. There are white men like you. And there are white men like Spicer. Spicer. Tell me something. Would you consider Ord Spicer guilty of murder? The Indian is Spicer's enemy, not his own people. Therefore, it is murder. Then you understand why it's Spicer I came after, not you. Why not me, Marshal? You're the Army's problem, not mine. I expect to fight the Army many times before we reach the mountains. Yeah. What, uh... What are your plans for me, Wild Hog? I have been thinking. Yeah? Yeah. I do not know yet. Well, what about Spicer? Spicer works for me. Why should I think about him? Then you're not as smart as I figured. You are right, Marshal. I do not trust Spicer. He is a traitor to his own people and only for money. I have rifles now and enough horses. I do not need Spicer. You're going to kill him? Why not? He is only another white man. You said yourself you can't kill all the white men. If you were free, Marshal, you would take him back and let other white men kill him. What difference how he dies? Makes a difference to me, Wild Hog. I'm a lawman. I may have to kill you, too. <laughs> You're a hard man to be friends with. I will explain to you, Marshal. It matters little about any Indian. A few more winters and not many of my people will be alive. I do not complain of our fate. Tribe follows tribe, nation follows nation. It is the law of nature. A white man's turn to be defeated and to disappear will come. It is just a matter of time. And so we may be brothers after all, Marshal. I'm not sure I believe all of that, Wild Hog. Of course.
course not. Still, I recognize you as a warrior among your people, as I am a warrior among mine. Too bad we're not on the same side. As long as we are brave and willing to die, it does not matter. I ride ahead now. You stay with the others. That night we reached the north fork of the Solomon River and camped with the shadow of low hills not many miles ahead. Wild Hog ordered my guards to keep me some distance from the rest of the party. So I pulled up some buffalo grass and bedded down on it early. I watched the stars until sleep came. Next thing I heard was the sound of horses fading off in the distance. The two braves guarding me had disappeared, so I got up and walked carefully back to where the Cheyennes were camped. There, a couple of horses stood tied to a bush, but they were alone. The Indians had left. I stopped for a moment to listen. And then, suddenly, I saw the figure of a man lying in the moonlight about 20 feet off. Spicer. Spicer. Yeah, there's no blood on you. You're all right. Come on a minute, man. Come on. Yeah. My hair. You've been knocked out, that's all. Now, come on, sit up. Uh, oh. Why don't you, Marsh? What, what happened? Where are they? Where's Wild Hall? They've gone. Gone? Gone where? Here, let me... Yeah. Where'd they go? They've been headed for the Bighorn Mountains. Less chance of running into the army if they travel at night. But they couldn't leave me. Not here. Not now. Looks like they did. Some brave club, Jim, they rode off. That's all. But I gotta go with them. You're still groggy, Spicer. And you're still under arrest. Remember? You can't take me in, Marshal. Wild Hog will be back. He won't let you. Why do you think he left you here, Spicer? We're, we're friends. Big friends, me and Wild Hog. You got no friends. You don't belong in anybody's camp. And I'm taking you back to Dodge anyway. That murdering Redsky's a better man than you, Spicer. He's brave and he's willing to die. Now, come on, we got a long ride back. <laughs> Report's finished, Mr. Dillon. Good. You better go on home now, Chester. It's getting late. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, what about these new Dodgers? I'll just leave them there. I'll look them over. Before. What's the matter, Mr. Dillon? They got company at the back door. Come in. All right, come in, mister. Get in, I said. Get your paws off of me. What? Uh, a girl. Sure, I'm a girl. What do you think I am? Put that long rifle away and I'll tell you. Where'd you get that thing, anyway? Pappy brought it with him from Kentucky. If it's any of your business, which it ain't by a darn sight. Uh-huh. What you doing hanging around in the alley? Get rid of him there and... a little jaw about it. Huh? I see. Uh, Chester. <laughs> Good night. Hmm? Well, but I'm not going to... Yes, sir. Good night, Mr. Dillon. My gracious. You and Marshall here? That's right, miss. My name's Hannah. Hannah Tolman. You arrest folks, don't you? 
<laughs> well, if they've committed a crime, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, then I got somebody for you to arrest. Oh, uh, who? Pappy. Why? Because I said to, that's why. And somebody's been trying to kill him. I figure about the safest place for him is in jail. <laughs> Wait a minute. Slow down. Let's start at the beginning, huh? A few days ago, Pappy was bushwhacked up in the hills near our place. Oh? Was he hurt? No. Slug just bounced off in his head a little. Yesterday, the bushwhacker tried again. He missed. Sounds like a bad shot. Sure. But if he keeps trying, he may get lucky. So you put Pappy in jail until I can run down this ambushing gent, okay? <laughs> you plan to cross guns with him yourself? I may be a girl, but I was barking squirrels while you were still trying to dent a tin can. <laughs> well, you better let me take care of it, miss. And as uh, for your father, I can't jail him without a charge. Sure, I know that. What kind of a charge do you want? <laughs> well, what kind do you have? Well, most any, I reckon. Ain't it enough that he's drunk all the time? Well, I can hold him overnight on that. What if he shoots up the town? That's five days for disturbing the peace. That'll do. Where did he do this shooting? We ain't. Yet. He's down at the Alphaganza slopping up booze at that other old buzzard, Jingle Bob. Oh, the swamper? Yeah, that's the one. You'd best be somewhere around the saloon in a few minutes. I got a feeling Pappy's about due to bust the law again. Her story didn't make much sense, but there was something about the mountain girl's gleaming black eyes and the set of her pretty but stubborn face that made me go to the Alifraganza. At the bar, I ordered a glass of rye and watched two bewhiskered old-timers trying to outlie each other over a rapidly emptying bottle. Yes, sir, Jingle Bob. You just wait and see. Ed Coleman's gonna have the biggest den horse ranch in Kansas come spring. Uh, sure you are, absolutely. <laughs> and me, why, I I reckon I'll just buy up this here saloon. Oh, you're lying. Well, sure I am. Ain't you? What's well, my money was spending, ain't it? How many times I gotta tell you I'm getting rich? Happy, are you drunk? <laughs> If I ain't, I've been wasting a side of time. Now leave me alone, daughter. Go home where you belong. I'm going. Only come over to tell you, man, bet me ten dollars you couldn't shoot out that lamp on the first shot. What's that? Oh, give me that rifle. All right, hold on. That's enough of that. Stay back, son. What? What's going on? Now, go collect your ten dollars, daughter. Yeah, Pappy. But I think the marshal here's a fixin' to arrest you. Huh? Ain't you, marshal? <laughs> yeah, I guess I am. All right, come along, Jeff. Well, what is come on. Well, get your hands come on. off me. Well, I never... You jailing a man for, for having a little fun. Why, you'd never get away with this back in Kentucky. Jed, you're in trouble, aren't you? Who's trying to kill you? No, I reckon that's my business. Now, that's the law's business. I'll take care of myself, Marshal. Uh-huh. Back in the saloon there, you mentioned having money and getting more. So? From what I've heard, you and your daughter run a two-bit horse ranch up in the hills. That hardly figures to make you rich. So? Ah, you thick-headed old... Look, all I'm doing is trying to save your skin if it's in danger. Now, why don't you help me instead of being... Reckon I don't want to. Well, that's plain enough. Morning, Chester. Oh, morning, Mr. Dillon. You better take a look at this new Dodger. Huh? Wanted for robbery and murder... Vic Tolman. So that murderous gun hawk is loose again, huh? Broke out of prison last week. Yeah. If he's kin to Jed Tolman, he'll like to be heading this way. Yeah, likely. I'll give you a hunch, Chester. I think he's here already. You do? You know where he is? No, not exactly. But I expect Hannah Tolman may have an idea. And that's where I'm heading. <laughs> Now, 
that's what I like to see. Uh, a man-sized appetite. <laughs> this wonderful corn pone. Now, I'm a good cook. I've been cooking for Pappy ever since Ma died ten years ago. Huh? You take pretty good care of him. Somebody has to. Pappy's kind of shiftless. I reckon he'd starve if I didn't feed him. The only things he cares about are wild horses and booze. And in a pinch, he'd give up horses. <laughs> You know, you're quite a woman, Hannah. You're pretty, brave, and with more courage than most men I know. Too quick, Marshal. What? You're sweetening me up for some reason. Not that I mind, you understand. I'm partial to a strapping fella like you. And Pappy's always after me to get hitched up. Because it ain't fitting for me to be 22 without a man. Oh, you're still young. Not the mountain folk. I'm an old maid. And I'm agreeable for some sweet talk. Only I don't trust yours. What are you after, Marshal? All right, Hannah. I only want the truth. About what? Where's your father getting this money he's spending? I wish I knew. Who shot at him? I don't know, but I'm aiming to find out. Where's Vic? Where's he hiding, Hannah? Who? Vic Tolman, your brother. Or maybe he's your cousin. Brother. Where? I don't know. Hannah, be sensible. Vic's a murderer. Vic's my kin. We Tolmans don't turn on each other. If you shelter him, you're guilty of... Marshal, I reckon you just wore out your welcome. <laughs> The prisoner will stand up and face me. <clears throat> Jed Tolman, you've been found guilty of disturbing the peace. Sentence of this court is five days in jail or a hundred dollars. A hundred? Well, Judge, ain't that a much steep just for... A hundred dollars or five days. Uh, I ain't got that much on me. Uh, but I can get it if you let me go just for... Just a minute. Hey. Hey. Order in the court. Now, what's the meaning of, uh, of this interruption? I want to pay this man's fine, Your Honor. That's your privilege, sir. hundred dollars... Pay the clerk. Yes, sir. Yeah, Dick Curry. Somebody's been turning over rocks. <laughs> well, I don't know him, but he's sure a friend. Looks like I ain't going with you, Marshal. Yeah, it looks like. But in your boots, I wouldn't be happy. Curry's one of the worst killers yet unhung. Oh, man, is that a way to talk about me? I'm clear with the law. Come on, Mr. Tolman. Go ahead, Jed. And, uh... Say hello to Vic for me. Uh, Vic? Oh, no. Mr. Curry. Is that true? Well, what's the difference who put up the hundred? Come on. No. No, not even it's Vic. No, you can't make me. I said come on. Marshal, don't let him take me. Oh, shut up and come on before Curry. I... Curry. Hmm? Stay out of this, Marshal. I don't think so. You paid his fine. You didn't buy him. He's going with me, Matt. Don't try to stop me. I can't imagine anything that would give me more pleasure. You don't like living, do you? Very much. Now, just any time you feel like it. No. Not here, Matt. I'll pick my spot. Yeah. I'll try not to turn my back on any dark alleys. Do that. And, Tillman, I'll be seeing you again. <laughs> Why don't we play while we wait? No, thanks, Jingle Bob. You needn't wait with us. 
Well, Jed's my friend, Mr. Dillon. Sure. Maybe I can't help him none, but at least I can share whatever the trouble is. Understand? Mm hmm. Now, uh, Jed here is a lying old ringtail drunk, but me, well, when a man is down to scrubbing saloon floors just to get the liquor that'll keep his nerves from shaking apart, he, he's grateful for any friendship that's offered. Don't move. Uh, Curry, get his gun. That thing. <laughs> you recognize me, Mark? Yeah, that's how it. Yeah. Oh, Vic yeah. Tolman. There are Dodgers out on you. You're a cool one, Dylan. Too bad we're on opposite sides of the fence. Yeah, it's too bad. Real pity. <laughs> you know, I'm going to enjoy this job. What job? Well, don't you know? Vic's taking his paw away from you. But you won't mind. You'll be dead. Curry, you stick here and take care of these two. Jed and I'll go on ahead. Oh, son. Son, I, I don't want to go nowhere. Now, Paul, don't rile me. You're going with me. None of you are going any place, Vic. Check. What? A window. Window. Reach high, both of you. And let go of that hardware. Now, you better do as he says. Because Chester's a little nervous with that shotgun. As mine. Looks like the odds are with you, so... You might as well get rid of that spare in your boot, Vic, before you run into any temptations. You got sharp eyes, Marshal. Law gets a lot of backing up tonight. Your mistake, Vic. Sometimes people just don't give Chester enough credit. time. Hmm. Beef steak, fried potatoes, stewed corn. Marshal, I must say, you run a nice jail. Don't he, Curry? Mm. <laughs> Don't mind Curry. He's a little depressed about last night. You still run a nice jail. Something on your mind, Marshal? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a couple of things. Such as? Oh, such as... Your father's spending money he hasn't earned. Claiming to know where he can get more. Mm. Paul sure a terrible liar. Mm -hmm. Such as him getting shot at twice and refusing to talk about it. Or help me investigate. Paul's a little bashful, too. Yeah. Such as his being afraid of you. Mm. I guess Paul's getting old, little daughtery. Yeah. Then, of course, there's you. Well, now you're on my favorite subject. Go on. Well, you're a killer and a thief. <clears throat> but you're cool and smart. Smart enough to educate yourself. I had lots of time to read in the pen. Lots of time. You're going to have more. But not much more. But you're going to hang for those guards that you killed. Maybe. Curry, ain't you going to eat that? Mm-mm. Now, go on about me being smart. You're smart enough to know the most dangerous place for you to go after you escaped was here. Well, it looks like I ain't as smart as you think. It depends on what reason you had for risking coming here. Boy, that's your good coffee. First jail I was ever in where the coffee was fit to drink. Oh, thank you. Okay, Marshal. Now, just what was my reason? Reason was money. Money? Cash. It's the only thing that'd give you a chance to get out of the country. You're in for robbery as well as murder. How much of the loot was recovered? You know how it is, Marshal. Easy come, easy go. I spent it as fast, well, nearly as fast as I got it. So nothing was recovered, huh? No, it was all gone. It was all hidden, you mean? Hidden until Jed found it. Paul? Sure. That's his source of money. It's also why he was afraid to go with you. <laughs> like I said, too bad we're on opposite sides. You got brains and you use them. You want to fill in the details for me? I'll tell you this. 
You're right about my cash of money. I'd had it and be on my way to Mexico by now if Paul hadn't switched hiding places on me. You know, it hurts. Paul's turning against me. Yeah, yeah. The Tolmans always stick together. Except when money's involved. How about you, Markham? Money by you? Sky's the limit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll figure it out. Well, <clears throat> been a nice chat. Won't take this straight. <laughs> Hurry, give me a hand. All right, back up, Curry. That's it. And tell Vic when he wakes up to take it easy. Or he won't live to be hung. Hey, Jingle Bob. You seen Jed? Oh, sorry, Marshal. I don't know where Jed is. Been looking for him myself. <clears throat> Golly, I'm cold. He must have left town last night. Yeah. Ain't you cold? I got an old jacket you can have. I'd rather have a shot. Better steal two shots. You got the jumps? Always got them. Except when I'm full of booze. Funny, you won't believe it, but there was a time when I couldn't stand the taste of hard liquor. Made me sick. No, can't live without it. Yes, you can. Well, maybe. Let's say I don't want to. Let's say that... Here. Huh? Go buy yourself a drink. Hey, hey, that's enough for a whole bottle. Well, we change. See you later, Marshal. Supper time, Chester. Chester. Chester, you all right? The prisoners? Gone. Hannah Tolman slipped him a gun. They made me open up the cell, and then Vic slugged me. Well, I know where they'll go. Please, Mr. Dillon, take me along. It was my fault they escaped. All right, Chester. Ask Doctor put a quick patch on that head, and we'll go after him together. <laughs> Starting to get dark. Yeah. Why'd we leave the road back there? I wanted to reach that rise, Chester. But we circled around to come up the back side. Does that have something to do with you bringing binoculars? Yeah, it does. Vic Tolman will know he'll be followed. I want to see what kind of a surprise he has for us. All right, pull up. You wait here. No. Not yet. Now, wait. I knew now. Yeah, it's Curry, all right. He's holed up in some brush just beyond the turn in the road down there. Well, what do we do, Mr. Dillon? Uh, take the horses and circle back the way we came. Start up the road, but don't make the turn. I understand. Now, be sure. As long as you don't make the turn, you'll be safe. But, uh, I do want you to make some noise. Noise? Yeah, I want you to sing, whistle, throw rocks, anything. Just so long as it holds Curry's attention. It was slow work, crawling down through the brush, but finally I was only ten feet behind Curry's position. The gunman was holding a rifle trained on the turn. And out of sight, coming up the road, I could hear Chester. Well, he wasn't good, but he was loud. I'm going around that turn, blast you. All right, don't turn around, Curry. What? Now, you may have a point, but I like Chester. Bad singing and all. Now, lay the rifle aside and unbuckle your gun belt. Now, careful. Yeah, sure, sure. Only don't shoot. 
Okay. Chester! Chester! I didn't mean no harm. I, I was only going to scare him. Yeah. Now, where's Vic? At the Tolman house. Waiting for Jed to show up. Uh-huh. All right, put your hands behind your back. Mm. I'm going to tie you up and leave you here. What? Leave me here? Yeah, we'll pick you up on the way back to town. It was dark when Chester and I were moving through the trees up to the Tolman shack. There was a light in the front. And through a window, we could see the figure of Hannah Tolman moving around. Just a girl. Yeah, Vic's there. He just stand out of sight so Jed won't be scared off. Uh oh. She's coming out, heading this way. And there must be a well out here. She's carrying a bucket. And yeah, behind that tree, quick, and I'll take this one. Quiet down. We're not going to hurt you. Stop fighting. Chester, grab her legs quick. Yes, sir. I was saving these handcuffs for Vic, but I guess they'll do for you. There. Now, do you promise to be quiet or do we gag you? All right, have it your way. Chester, give me your bandana. Yes, sir. Here. Yeah, that should do it. All right, stay with her, Chester. I'm going for Vic. I was halfway to the shack when inside Vic Tolman became suspicious. Suddenly the lights went out. And the door opened. And the shadowy figure slipped out to stand, listening. Anna? Anna, answer me. Drop him, Vic. Who is that? I can't see. Matt Dillon. Throw down those guns. You're under arrest. Not this time. Vic. Yeah. You were right, Marshal. I ain't gonna live to... I ain't. Vic. Mr. Dillon, over here. Hey, uh, what is it, Chester? Who's that, Jed? Uh, yes, sir. I caught him sneaking towards the house. He was carrying this bag. Here, let me see. Uh, That's the money. I, I was taking it to Vic. Is he... Yeah. You're too late, Jed. Oh, no. How to give him his money... If only he hadn't taken them shots at me. He didn't. Until he found out where the money was hidden, he was the last person in the world to want you dead. But, uh, I don't understand. He he must be... No. Only the person who knew where you had the money would have shot at you. Nobody knew that. How could they? Who could... You talk a lot when you get drunk, Jed. And you only get drunk with one person. Huh? You mean... You mean Jingle Bob? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I was bragging. Told him all about finding it and switching hiding places. Well, that low-down snake. And him pretending to be my friend. Come on, Jed. I'll help you bury Vic. Then we'll get back to Dodge. We told him sure have had a bad week. (laughs) 